This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on September the 28th, 2015. Enjoy! Today on Computer Club Lesson, we're going to stick with the theme of Back to the Basics. We're going to talk about the mouse, that basic thing that helps you manipulate your computer. And then we're going to jump into creating documents, the very basics of document creation. All that and more on this edition of Computer Club Lesson. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, time to start. Because our video messed up from last week and um, I couldn't recover it, I'm going to take 10 minutes quickly and talk about the mouse because the, the mouse is part of our basic system. Um, there are several kinds of mouse. Uh, see the red light on the bottom? This is an optical mouse. It works well on flat, dark surfaces. Uh, it will work well on some kinds of cloth, like linen. Uh, it works best on a mouse pad, but you can even put it on your knee, and you can work it there. Um, the other kind of mouse is the trackball. It has, if you remember, it has a little ball in the middle, which would uh, clog up with gunk and stuff from your table. So you'd have to take it apart, take the ball out, wash the ball, and then go in and with a very fine pin, take all the gunk off the track mechanism. Eh, these are better. Now, they come in, uh, these wired mice come in uh, three varieties. Uh, they come as USB, which is this flat connection here, USB. And when you plug this connection into your computer, the mouse will start working right away. It might, uh, on the first time around, it might take a minute while it thinks about it, but it will work right away if your computer is plugged in and running. The next kind, the older kind of mouse, is a PS2 mouse. And it has a round connection, about the size of your pinky. And it has nine pins on the inside, and you've got to make sure it's just right before you plug it in. But it will not start working if your computer is on. Your computer has to be off, then you plug in the mouse, then you turn it on so the computer can find it. If you just plug it into a running computer, it doesn't know anything about it. Uh, the PS2 mouse, cup, by the way, comes in, in uh, the optical mouse configuration as well. There, is, uh, there are two kinds of radio controlled mice, mouses, whichever you prefer. Um, there is the Bluetooth connected mouse. Now, it's got a little dongle uh, here about the size of your thumbnail, which you plug into the side of your computer as you would any other mouse, no wires to it. And it communicates wirelessly with a radio signal to the mouse. Yes, come in please. Come in please. Um, it communicates wirelessly in the Bluetooth fashion to the mouse. And they talk back and forth with a radio signal. There is one specific problem to a Bluetooth mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard for that matter. And that is that if the mouse, if you don't use it for a little while, maybe 10 minutes or so, it shuts off the radio signal to save the battery. And so when you go to use the mouse again, sometimes you've got to click it four or five times to get the radio to restart. Then you've got to wait a couple of seconds for, them, for the computer to figure out, oh, I'm talking to a mouse, and then it will start to work. Um, the other um, 
kind of radio signaled mouse is here again, a dongle which plugs into the side of the computer, but it is not Bluetooth. It is a two-way radio with specific frequencies for mice. And it, uh, because it's not Bluetooth, it doesn't really go to sleep. It's always broadcasting out, where's my mouse, where's my mouse from the dongle, and the mouse will answer, I'm here, I'm here, unless it goes to sleep. Then all, if you want to wake your mouse up with this arrangement, all you have to do is just move it. And the mouse divines that you've moved it, it needs to wake up and start working properly. And so that is one of the basic controls of your mouse, uh, of the computer, is, is your mouse. Now let's talk about the buttons on the mouse. There's a left mouse button and a right mouse button, and on all modern mice except for Apple, um, on Apple there's only a left mouse button. That's all. Left mouse. One button. One. Uh, that's the way Steve wanted it. <laughs> there, there is no other explanation. That's the way Steve wanted it. Um, however, um, if you're used to a three-button three mouse, you can plug a three-button mouse into an Apple and it works just fine. It understands it completely. Anyway, left mouse button, right mouse button, and in the center, sometimes there's a button and some, most of the time there is the scroll wheel, which is also a button. You can push that as a button. The left mouse button, as you would expect, um, inside of a program, allows for manipulation of the cursor. The blinking thing there is the cursor. And so let's put some text in. And uh, I can now take the mouse activation bars there and I can click anywhere inside of that text and move the cursor. It's moved to the center of the text. So if I hit enter it's moved the text to the next line. Okay. There's also what's called the contextual menu. Whoosh! <laughs> the other name for it is right mouse. <laughs> The other button. But it's a contextual menu. And so it allows you to do certain things to the text or to whatever you're working on inside of the document. Um, and so I'm going to highlight this text. And I'm going to press the right mouse button. And you see I now have a contextual menu which allows me to do other things that are also here in, in, the, uh, in the menu bar, but it's a quick way to get at them so that um, I can clear the formatting, I can paste stuff in, I can copy this, um, I can cut it, I can do all kinds of things with it. Um, oops. So I can cut, I can copy, I can paste things in. I, at this stage, because of this kind of document I'm working in, I can reformat this text. It gives me all kinds of contextual things to do. Right mouse, right click is your friend. I've said that many times. Right click is your friend. If you get lost inside of a document, sometimes you can find what you want to do with right mouse. Right click. Rather than go hunting through the menu bar. Okay, so I've... Uh, I've highlighted that text. I can delete it. I can delete it. I can delete it. <laughs> and um, so there, there you go. That's the mouse, left bu mouse button, right mouse button. And um, I'm just going to quick, excuse me, quickly show you um, the scroll wheel in the mouse. And we'll wait for it to come up. Always waiting. I like your hat. Thank you so much. I like it too. 
I'm going to get us a nice big web page here where we can show off the mouse scroll. Scrolling wheel in the middle. If you click on the inside of something uh, like a web page or a large multi page document, or even uh, a document that's only showing part of itself on the screen. If you click inside there and activate the page, you can now use the scroll wheel to move through the document by scrolling in, in either direction. Okay, scrolling. Um, if a mouse has a scroll wheel, in a lot of cases, if you click on the scroll wheel, you'll be presented with a change in how the mouse cursor looks. In this case, it's, it's showing you I can do four directions. Okay, so um, if you click again and hold down, come on, you see it's now scrolling on its own. I'm not doing it. The mouse is scrolling on its own because I'm just simply moving it around. Okay, and I click again and it stops. So there you go. The, those are the controls on the mouse, um, the different kinds of mice. I recommend that if you can get away with it, you always use a wired mouse. Um, radio mouse, mices, mices, um, can fail. And then you're stuck without a way to navigate around in your computer except for the keyboard. They're much more robust than a, than a radio type mouse. You drop a radio type mouse on the floor, it can stop working like that. Then you've got to go to the store and spend $25 to $35 to get another one. Twelve bucks for a good one. Okay, wired mouse. All right, there you go, that's, that's for the most. Thank you for your indulgence on that. Now, uh, continuing on in the um, vein of, of uh, basics for our computer, uh, what I'd like to do now is talk about basic uh, programs that allow you to create documents. Basic document creation. Okay, That's one of the things that a computer does so well. But there are some basics to it. And if you understand these basics when you go to the more complex programs like LibreOffice or Microsoft Office, if you've got these basics, you can do stuff and then experiment. But if you don't have these basics, you're going to be completely lost to the experimentation that you can do. All right, so here's Notepad. And in Windows, Notepad is the very basic program um, for making um, text documents for yourself or creating text documents that you can send to someone else through email. Um, the first thing that we'll do is we'll create some random text in this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it big. I'm going to make it big so everybody can see. There. Everybody should be able to see now. I made it big. I made it, it was at, um, the font size was 11, I made it to 20. I did that by going to the format in the program in the menu bar, format, and it gives me two options. To format the font or wrap words around. I'll talk about word wrap in a minute. But to format the font, there's different kinds of fonts that we can use. So yeah, it's changing the different the different types of font. What what we like to use best is Sansory for Courier. Doesn't really matter, and we can change 
the text to bold or bold oblique or stuff like that. We can go back to regular text and we can change the size of the text. And I can make it really big. And when I give that an OK, all of the changes that I made inside of the format text um, menu are activated. You can't do any of this until you've highlighted the text. Until you've highlighted the text so that the program knows what text are you fiddling with. Okay, So it knows. Now the other thing here is word wrap. If I turn word wrap on, it will wrap around the screen um, so that you can see where you're going. It doesn't go off to the side. If I turn word wrap off, you see it's going to go off to the side, but you also see down on the bottom of, of the screen here, um, a, um, a navigation bar appeared that I can click on that and I can move through the text. It's just it's just a navigation bar. That's all. Oh, just the bar there. Yeah, but if I turn word wrap on, the navigation bar disappears, and now the text has wrapped around the screen. The full full. Yeah, the full text is wrapped around the screen. Um, if I print that, does the print make it to standard size? No. If you if you tried to print this right now, it would print full size text or the text that you have made in that size. So let us just say, for the sake of argument, that you wanted to make a for sale sign. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how big I can make this, but let's try. Format the font. Uh, 72 is about as big as I can make it. Yeah, that's it pretty much. Then you can look at this in a print preview and see how big it is. Okay? So you can make big things sometimes. Uh, so we'll just put some random text back in here. Um, now, you, when you wrap it, can you move it? Yes, you can. I'm going to turn, I'll turn word wrap off. So you see it's going off to the edge. I can, I can go click anywhere inside of this text, or this text. I can put my cursor right there. If I hit enter, it now takes that piece of text to the end and puts it on the next line. Okay? And what I'm telling you now is the same for all programs that can make something. That can make a document or an Excel spreadsheet or even sometimes inside of uh, picture manipulation software. It's all in there. These basics are there. There may be more basics to go uh, for the more, um, for different programs that have more features there may be more basics about them, but these are the basic basics of text. Okay, so if I want to say I want to print out an invite or something, how do I know that it's going to fit on an invite? Um, when, when, you, uh, when you click on print, okay, there should be, um, let's see if it's here, there's either a page set up or in uh, some of the other programs like WordPad and, and uh, Microsoft Office, there should be a print preview. If you click on print preview, it will show you how the print job is going to look in its final form. Okay. If I click on page setup, I can, I've got some basic things here that I can do and, and it's showing me a print preview of how more text will look inside of the document here. Okay, a print preview. But I can change where the margins are. 
Okay, they're three, qu three quarters of an inch right now. Um, one inch from the bottom and one inch from the top. Makes a nice border. Okay, you can change that. Um, you can change the uh, size of the paper you're using. Um, let me see. Yes, okay. Uh, there's lots of them here in, uh, in Notepad, but I should be able to change it to a number 10 size envelope. And it will show you how uh, an envelope, front page envelope full of text will look. I'm going to change that back before I forget. Yeah, now I've lost it. Anywho, we'll close that and see. All right, so there is a very basic way to manipulate text in Notepad. Now, if we go to the next, oh, by the way, saving. Let's talk about saving here because this is no good to you unless you can save it somewhere where you can find it again. If you make a brand new document, you open up Notepad or WordPad or any of the other document creators and it's, it's a brand new document, once you've done things to the document or even before you start, save that blank document as a save as. Save it first and put it in the place where you want it, in your documents, on your desktop, wherever you want it. So we'll do that now. We'll do file and we have the option here to save or save as. Now, we have to do save as first for a brand new document and I'll do that. And it opens a dialog box saying that, uh, well, the computer has discovered that I'm working on a document because I'm using Notepad. And so it's trying to be helpful. Did you right click to read that? No, no, I just clicked on file. No, the save as. No. No. No, no, you just file, click on save as, and, and this dialog box will open. The computer's trying to be helpful. I'm working on a document, so it says, well, I'll, uh, by default I can put that in the documents folder if you like. So it's going to go to this PC, Documents. And if I said OK to that and gave it a name, that's where it would go. But I don't want that. No. I want to be able to find this document. Um, right away. So I'm going to put it on my desktop. So I'm going to call this a test document. And by default, it is a text document.txt because that's what Notepad does. And I'll say save. Now I can close out of the document and I can go to, um, where did it put it? Oh, that's right. I put it in documents because I didn't save it yeah. to the desktop. Duh. And there it is right there. All right, but if I had had my head on straight, I would have put it on the desktop. So I've navigated to Documents again. And there's my document. Now, when I open it, in Notepad, there it is. And so I can make some changes to it if I want to. I can start another line down here, put in more text, and do what I want to it. Now, I have two options under File. Because it's not a brand new document, I can just simply save it with the changes that I just made. So you can click Save and Close, and it saves the changes. I can also do a Save As and name the, I've, the first document I named was test. I can, I can 
name it test2 and it will make a do new document with these changes but if I simply say save and close out of it what's happened is the document has remained the same name text if I wanted to keep the first iteration of that document I would have to save the second document as text too because look what's happened folk it's the first uh, the first document has saved with the changes I just made um, so save and save as are important basics of making documents if you have a brand new document that you've done nothing to the first thing to do is do a save as and give it a name put it somewhere where you're not going to find where you're not going to lose it like I did if, yeah. if you fail to do that and you write a little bit on your new documents and you hit save where does that document end up it, it ends up it um, if you open a document that has stuff in it and you make a change and you hit save and close it it goes it it's, saves the document that uh, that you just opened where it was in my case test is in um, this PC documents okay I did not change the name because I didn't use save as so it saves those changes now, can we just go one step back okay Yep. I haven't done save as or anything. I have foolishly gone ahead and written 10 paragraphs. Well, you can do that. Now, if I just save, not save as, just save, where does it end up? It does not end up anywhere because you have not given it exactly. a name yes. and told it where to go. A brand new document, you must do a save as. Now, to your case, 10 paragraphs is a big mistake. <laughs> That's, that's why you want to do a save as and name it before you even start. Okay, so if by accident you do close it or the computer crashes, there's an opportunity for the computer to save some stuff that you've done. All is not lost, maybe. Well, if I close it without saving it, the computer saves. Yes, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to, I'm going to make another change to this. Um, make another change. And I'll, I'll insert a line here. And I'll just close it now. Oops. Sorry. Okay. So I've gone up to the red X and I want to close the document. And it says, do you want to save this? If I want to keep the changes I just did, yes, save. If I look at the document and say, nah, I got it wrong, I'll come back and do it later, and I click don't save, it will revert back to the old document. So everything I just did will be undone. Okay? That's the way to look at it. Everything, if you don't save anything, everything you just did will be undone. If I open a new document and don't hit save and hit close, will it not tell me to be you know, being stupid? Will it? Yes, that's that's what this dialog box is for. If if you there's my document with the changes that I've just made. I'm going to close it with the red X, or I can even do file exit. But I'm going to, in this case, I'm just going to hit the red X. And it gives me the dialog box. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not done here. Do you want to save what you've, what you've started or not? Don't save. So if I say don't save, and I go back to my documents folder, and I open up. What I just did in there, gone. It's not there. Okay, you can you can use that to sort of test ideas. Like 
if you're, if you're making a letter to a friend and you want to test an idea, see how it looks, okay, go ahead, do that. And if you don't like it, simply close the document, it goes back to the way it was. If you like it, you will do a save. Okay? Save and save as. Very important, very basic to making documents. All right, so I'm going to get out of this now. And I'm going to do a document in WordPad, which is the next step up. Your computer has Notepad, but it also has WordPad as uh, a way to make documents. It has more features. Look at all of these features, folk. You can do more stuff. Uh, there's more ways to format the document. There's ways to add things to it, um, things you wouldn't really expect. You can add a picture. You can add a date and time. You can insert an, uh, what's called a smart object where it becomes part of the document, but you can't see it. But if you click on it, it does something else. Um, you, can, you can do a search in your computer's um, search, search bar just above the, in your case, um, it's just above the Windows key. Okay, but it's, it's uh, it comes, WordPad comes as um, uh, standard on, yeah, on Windows. Okay, so you've got Windows 10? Okay, well here in Windows 10 to find WordPad, you would click inside this search box right beside the window, okay? Or you can click on the Windows button itself and it will be, um, it will be under all apps, alphabetically it's under W, so right at the bottom, okay? But you can search right here, just start typing word P, word pad, and it will bring it up that you can click on it, and there it is. All right, so let's go back to word pad here now. And like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's the same as word, a uh, notepad, but with a lot more features. What I couldn't do with that, so I can make my letters large, but when it prints, it's still small. Mmm. You gotta hit the OK button. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hit the OK button, you're right. Um, Sometimes in the uh, print options on your print, it says fit page. Yeah, which if... Then we fit the page. Yeah, which would make the text smaller. Yeah. Okay. If you don't click on fit, uh, fit to page, oh. then it will make two pages, or as many as it needs. Well, that's very yeah. Uh, but that's printing. We'll talk about printing next week as, oh. as basics. I will even bring a printer with me, I hope, and we will talk about printer basics because it's a basic function of the computer. So anyway, back to document here. So I've opened a brand new Word document, and here again, it's got save and save as. So if I click on save as, it's going to open up my dialog box, and I can put it where I want it. Um, but there's just one or two things a little different here. First off, the file type that it's going to save, okay, is rich text format. Name of document, test document dot RTF, rich text format. You can change that with this drop down dialog box. You can change it to a text document and it will only have the characteristics of a notepad document. In other words, if you insert a picture, that picture will be gone. But you want to save it as a rich text uh, formatted document uh, because all Windows computers can read it. So if you want to send it to a friend, they can read it. They can open it up and make changes to it and send it back to you. So you can manipulate documents that way. Rich text format is part of every Windows computer. And now it's, by default, it's given it a name of document. Um, if there was another 
entry in here in rich text format called document already, this would be very helpful and it would say document two. Very helpful. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm going to call this test two. And I'm going to save it. And just for the sake of argument, we'll get out of there. And there's, te um, there's test two as a rich text document. And I open it up. It's going to want to open it in WordPad. Now let's, um, let's do the same as we did before. Put some random text in here and we'll format the text. Um, grow font. Oh, here again, you have to, you have to highlight the text that you're playing with. If it does, if you don't highlight it, the computer doesn't know what it's working with. So highlighting something is telling the computer, work with this and only this. Okay. Now there's one other way to highlight all the text you've done. Let's go back to the keyboard and those keyboard shortcuts. Control A. Highlighted everything. Okay. You don't have to mess with the mouse. There you go. Control A. And if I want to cut that text and put it somewhere else, Control X. And I can move the cursor down and do Control V. And I've put the text there. Okay. So I'm going to do a Control A and I'm going to make the text in Big World. And here it comes. Big World. I can underline it. I think I can underline it. Or I can make the text smaller. All kinds of, oh yeah, here we go. I can make it bold. I can underline it. And I can italicize. All kinds of things you can do with it. You can change the color. You can change the color of the text. So I can turn it red. Right? Can you do that if you don't have red ink? If you don't have red ink, it's going to print in grayscale. <laughs> so you got red ink and therefore you can change the color. Yeah, yeah. But if, if you, uh, let's say you want to send this document to a friend and you want them to, uh, you, you want something particular in the document to stand out, you can do all these things to it. Dear Fred, how are you? Big red flashing something or other. How do you send it? Okay, that's basic email and we'll get to that in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all this stuff up here. Don't miss the class. <laughs> Don't miss the class. All right, so you can see now that WordPad gives you a lot more options than Notepad. After you've done about 10 of these and a month later you want to recall something, uh, how do you remember? Which document you did? Yeah. Like if you give it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you don't designate You can designate it by, date, by month and date. Uh, you can designate it by subject. Whatever you want to do. By subject would be better. Yeah. Whatever you want to do in the save as, you can, you can uh, name it by month and day. Excuse me, by subject. As a matter of fact. Yeah. Oh, yes, it will. As a matter of fact, um, let's do this. I'm going to say don't save. And we've got our, so we're back to our rich text test 2 RTF. If I right click on the icon, our contextual menu, if I right click on it, down here it says rename. 
So if you've given it a quick name just to get started and done a save as, and you've given it a lot more thought about what's inside the document, you can rename it to that subject. When you first do it. After, after, you've, after, after you've manipulated the document so many times or, or how many times you want, and you've decided that, that test two just is not cutting it, you can rename it to something more appropriate to the way you think about the document. Hmm? Yeah, something you can identify, either by date or by subject matter, any, anything your little heart desires, you can name it to. No, uh, once you've downloaded it, you should be able to rename it. Okay. Okay, but you can't rename it on my web page. No, okay. Okay. But I have to have it in my document. And you have to have it as a separate file. Right. Yes. Yeah. But sometimes when it says rename, another thing that comes up that says if you rename this by extension. Yes, by extension. You will see. Then, then I'm, I think I better not rename it. <laughs> well, um, by default, I, I make all of my computers show me what file extension any particular file is using. We'll come to that sometime down the road. But um, in this case, it's saying uh, rich uh, RTF, uh, rich text format. Okay. Um, if I rename this right now, It's only allowing me to change the name. It's not allowing me to change the file extension. There's another way to do that. It's just allowing me to change the name. So I can rename it to test three. Yeah, but test three doesn't No, no, but it's just for the sake of argument. I've renamed it to test three, but it's still a rich text format. It still gives it that. Yeah. All right. What does the rich text format mean? It means that you have, you're using a program that allows you to do much, much more than um, a notepad document would allow. Okay. I can, uh, I can even go so far as to um, embed a picture in this document. Okay, that's a nice one. I'll go there. There, I've embedded a picture in my document. Okay. How did you do it? It is one of the features, uh, and there are many. If you open up a WordPad um, and make a new document, you can start playing with these features. So the rich text thing is up there too, on one of those? Yeah, this, this is, um, when you, don't get hung up on, rich text. It's a rich text format. That means that the document is able to do things like hold a picture. I can't do this in Notepad. I can't, I can't do this in Notepad. I can only do it in WordPad oh, or, or better. Well, it, I'm sorry, say again? Beyond Notepad, yes. But they can name themselves to different things. Like in Microsoft, it would be a .docx or .doc. Um, you can, when you save something as a .doc, then by default, it's in rich text. So you could put pictures in it and such like that. Okay? This is a little similar to Word in Office. Yes. Yeah. And we'll go to that in a minute here. Exactly. So, yeah, you can name the folder anything, okay. and uh, and if you've got winter pictures, all your pictures of winter can go in there. Within the document. Yeah, uh, in the folder yeah. that you've that you've just made. Okay. Um, gee, that's pretty. That's across the road of my house. <laughs> so we'll make this go away. 
All right. Um, I would suggest that when you get some time, go and find your word pad and play with it. You can't hurt anything. You can drive yourself nuts. You can do that too, <laughs> but <laughs> what, what you do now know is that there are a lot of things that you can do in WordPad that you can't do in Notepad. And there are even more things that you can do in a Microsoft document than you can do in WordPad. Okay? You put Office something online and it's still, I've never even opened it. What's yeah. that then? Um, I, I gave you LibreOffice, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is uh, a suite of programs like Microsoft Office. It does the same thing. More features. Um, so, we've pretty much Now, in, um, in WordPad, it also gives it, and this is only for uh, if you have a local email client. And when I say local email client, if you have something like Thunderbird Mail or Windows Live Mail or Outlook or something like that, um, if you click on uh, the file, it gives you an opportunity to send your document via email. So it will prepare the document in an email uh, um, to be sent and you can just, oh really, uh, you can just simply send it to your friend. Okay, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a couple of weeks. That's all part of basic things. Okay. Um, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to get out of here. Let's see, don't save it. And I'm going to open LibreOffice. And let's call this Microsoft Office. Okay, same thing. Has even more features. But when you open it, you're going to do the exact same thing. The first thing you're going to do is give it a name. Save as. Okay, save as. Give it a name so that when you start manipulating the document, all you have to do is save it. But it does a lot of things that, uh, that uh, WordPad doesn't do. You can save this as a PDF. Every computer on the planet can read a PDF. You don't have to worry about and And you can make the document as rich and as full with pictures and, and all kinds of things and different kinds of fonts and all, anything you can think of to put into that document except media can be um, exported as a PDF and any computer on the planet can read it the way you formatted the document. They don't have to have Microsoft Office. Okay, uh, That's one of the features. Um, in this, it has a print preview. So if I click on print preview, whether I have a printer or not, it will show me what this would look like on a sheet of paper printed. Okay. Um, what does export mean? Send? No, ex export means that um, I've saved this document as a Microsoft document. Okay. Export means that I can take that Microsoft document and I can export it to another uh, to another program that can manipulate the document and read it and make an exact copy, but in a different format. Okay, so you're exporting it from one program to another. Um, And so we can do as we did before, put in some random text. Control A, highlight the text. And then we can do things 
like we can bold the text, we can underline the text, we can change its color. Okay, all of those things. We can uh, insert pictures into it. And here's something, folk, that you can do in this program that you can't do in the other. You can import media into it. And when I say that, what we're talking about is sound and movies. So if I imported um, a song into this, it would have a little icon in the page where I imported it and a button for the guy on the other end. Click the button and hear the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't get hung up on LibreOffice. Microsoft Office does all of this too, and more. Well, if you have it and never used it, the thing to play with first is WordPad. Get used to what it does. Yeah, get used to what it does because Microsoft, uh, uh, the Office suites do exactly the same thing, only more. Okay, so there we go. That is pretty much um, the basics of creating documents. When you click on your line and, and different things, do you have to click at the end to, um, to stop it? No, no. Just well, remember, I highlighted this text. If I'd only highlighted this much, okay, and I, I could change the color back to black, of only that much. Whatever I've highlighted, that's what the computer wants to play with. Whatever's highlighted. Okay, do I want to save the changes? Don't save. Okay, the basics of creating documents. Notepad, WordPad, and an Office Suite which is either LibreOffice, OpenOffice, Microsoft Office, there are a couple of them. And any Windows computer on the planet can read them. And most Apple computers on the planet can read them. Okay? Any questions about how you create documents, save documents, what happens when you save them? On the one when you were talking about not a save, in some cases, does it not actually take the first few words yeah, it's in Microsoft Office. It will. It will take the first few words yeah. that you've written, even as a title yeah, of the called. document, and it'll name it that. Okay. All right. And it will name it that. If you don't like that, you can change. Maybe it. change it. Yeah. Yes. With uh, with the PDF files, um, and you said that anybody, any computer can read that. Uh, is there a way I, I would see PDF files and you can? Enable editing if you want to. can only enable editing if you've purchased a PDF editor. And that's the thing about PDF. When Adobe um, made the PDF format so that everybody could read a PDF document, only the people that had bought the program to create PDF documents, and they paid a lot of money for it, could edit them. Make the document or edit it. Unless you've purchased a PDF editor, you're stuck with what you see. And that's why it was done. So that um, if somebody sent you a PDF document, you couldn't willy-nilly make changes to it and send it on to somebody else. But for example, I might receive something, I have received something, and I want to print it, and it comes up as a dialog box. Uh, you can't print it unless you enable editing, and I click enable editing, and then I can print it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. I don't know how your computer is set up, but everyone's different. Okay. Go with what works. Yes? When I try to open an old document, Yes. because now I'm on 10, which it says now this PC documents rather than my documents. Yes. It won't open because it says not supported file. And now I don't know what to do. With it. All right. Um, when you have a file that's not supported, it means that the program that was able to open that document 
and look at it and manipulate it is not functioning or not there. Is that because I changed to 10? It might be. It might be that you had it named as something that your old computer could see and operate with, but that name has, is, uh, didn't change, but the program to manipulate the document did change. So now that's why you can't see it. So, so what, what, was, what was the document? What was on, it has the Adobe sign. Okay. Um, so it's trying to open it as a PDF document. Right? You may have, to, you can try uh, going into your control panel um, into add, uh, features and programs, remove uh, Adobe Reader, and then go and get it again from Adobe, get Adobe, get dot Adobe dot com and download it and reinstall it. Reinstalling a program in Windows 10 sometimes gets it functioning again. Most of the time gets it functioning again. So are you now, are we at the end of the month where you could recommend that we should change the Windows 10? The daily 10? Yeah, we're there. Yeah. We're there. Um, if, you, if you have Windows 10 downloaded in your computer, um, you can go to um, And it should have done this for you already. Um, update. Okay. Do you want to install? Okay. At this point, I would say okay. Now, if there is something basically wrong with the download and it doesn't work, your computer will figure that out and do one of two things. It will just sit there for an hour like yours did, or hours and hours, or no, it was somebody else. Sit there for hours and hours trying to load the program and nothing's happening. Hold down the power button, turn it off, and turn it back on again. It should revert back to Windows 7, or Windows 8. It should revert back. The other thing that might happen, um, is that it might start loading the program and then get stuck installed saying that a, uh, one of the components of your computer is not compatible with Windows 10. And it'll tell you which one it is. Um, in that event, you're going to have to call me because I'm going to have to remove that incompatibility and get it to go. But in 95% of the cases that I've heard, it goes ahead with no problem. Okay? Yeah, it's going to take a couple hours. It takes a couple of hours. Be prepared to wait. Um, if you're using a laptop, make sure it's plugged in. As the program won't let you try and do an update unless it divines that it is plugged in. Um, and don't touch it until it says, okay, you can touch me now. I have a situation with a program, and I know you're not a BlackBerry fan, um, but it's called BlackBerry Blend, and I know I have the most up-to-date version. Yep. When I click on it to open it, it just clicks me back to the desktop. And if I go back and reboot my computer to an earlier, and then it'll work for a while until I restart the computer again, and then I click on it, and then the desktop just comes up. I don't know. I don't know anything about BlackBerry stuff. They have problems. And, <laughs> and you know what they're doing? They're going to Android. Yeah. They're not, they're, Blackberry yeah, BlackBerry is going to go to Android. Yeah. So over the next couple of years, those BlackBerry uh, telephones will be retired to the Android operating system. Mm -hmm. It's about time. What took them so long? I think it's too late. They, as a company, they've gotten into the car business where they can take their operating system and install it in cars and it works fine. Um, their operating system on a telephone, uh, not enough people will support it and buy it. That's dead. Phones from BlackBerry are going away. But in cars, you'll see it everywhere. 
Okay. Um, I think that's it for this week. Thank you so much for coming. What did I say we were going to do next week? Was it? Printing. 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 I got to leave myself a note about that. <laughs>